You tell me when. There we go. Ah, all right. What's up, everyone? Welcome to actually not a live, but pre-recorded. We are recording right now. Uh, my name is Robert Rohan. I'm joined by my guest, Robert Soto. And we're taping today just because I have a major appointment tomorrow. I can't cancel for stem cell. And we did talk about stem cell treatments. And if you want more information about what type of stem cell I'm doing, go back to our previous show. It was about two weeks ago. And you can listen to our stem cell uh, show. It's not so I can walk or anything, but it's also I'm mainly doing stem cell for healing. So but we are going to be live on the chat. So go ahead and put your questions in the chat box. Robert Soto and Sean are going to be with you guys tomorrow. And they'll be able to chat back and forth with you as you guys are listening to the show that's going on right now. Like I said, my name is Bobby Rohan. I'm a C56 quadriplegic of 33 years, and I live in Huntington Beach, California, or you can say uh, Fountain Valley, California, the official, but nobody knows where that's at. <laughs> and Sean and I were talking about. Uh, take it away, Robert. Okay, how you doing, everybody? My name is Robert Soto. I'm a T12. Uh, injury from a motorcycle accident, SCI, and uh, that happened in 1974. So I'm closing in on 49 years post-injury. So I'm, I'm just uh, still learning, <laughs> still adjusting uh, to my uh, my aging life. So um, we, we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll all kind of share some information and experiences as the series moves on, and uh, I think uh, we'll all learn from it. Yeah, uh, yeah. all learn together. So. I want to say thank you for our last show. We had a lot of great response. Uh, many of you guys got to watch our recording. Thank you so much for the outreach and uh, a lot of the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And I know Robert, you you said the same thing. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was a uh, it was great Good to see. And hopefully, this series takes off. And if you have any thoughts, um, ideas of what you want to hear, let us know uh, because. Today we're talking about something that, you know, Robert and I kind of found out that pretty much takes place as soon as you have a spinal cord injury, and that's osteoporosis. And we're going to get into some of those facts and, you know, some of the things that kind of shocked us, but um, it was kind of eye opener, you know, diving a little bit deep. I think, I think you and I knew most of it and uh, what osteoporosis you know, what really starts happening, especially aging with a spinal cord injury. You know, we're rolling over the hill, getting older, and our bones are becoming brittle. But it happens right away, and I didn't know that. What about you, Robert? Uh, no, in fact, I, I didn't have really much uh, familiarity with, with osteoporosis in terms of spinal cord injury. You know, we started uh, looking at what we are going to uh, do for our program, and uh, I kind of did a little more research on it. So, yeah, I'm surprised. I knew about uh, muscle atrophy, and uh, that kind of happened real quick for me. I guess what, what I'm finding out is with usually within the first couple of years, it, it, it happens pretty rapidly. And then after that, it happens, continues to happen the rest of your life. Uh, they don't really know why, I guess, it, it um, uh, is more accelerative in the, um, in the first two years. But there's a lot of research still done on it, and still a lot of little... Uh, discrepancies in terms of people not really understanding what it's all about but um uh, I'm, I'm learning a lot just by uh by your your you know you and i having discussions and then kind of the research we did for the show yeah absolutely. Yeah. eye opener and i know you know a little bit of history on my end i mean i've heard 33 years as i mentioned and so far i think i've broken broke my hip i broke my femur on both sides one was pretty pretty crazy i broke my femur the there was the first bone i broke and that was from water skiing so i mean one of those things out on the uh, sit ski and uh the sit ski turned over and the water kind of came and rushed in and took my leg and kind of almost wrapped it around my my back of my neck so i had the experience of breaking my femur and had a rod and nine pins put in and after all the swelling was done i noticed one pin almost sticking out of my skin so they had to remove one of the pins so i have a rod and uh eight pins 
And then I broke an ankle snow skiing, uh, going off jumps all day. And, you know, and all they did for that was cast it. And I was like, you're going to put a cast on my, what about a skin breakdown? They're like, you're, you'll be fine. Luckily I was, but I heard that the last thing you want to do is put a cast on somebody with SDI that doesn't have feeling. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then later, years later, I hairline fractured my other femur from a fall, transferring in and out of my van and then did my other ankle. And then lastly, my hip. So I've had a few broken bones and they're <laughs> all, you know, uh, two from sports and three from or two from falls and one from transferring and a weird transfer uh, in the movie theater where I just transferred back into my chair. Yeah. And I just heard it pop, and I'm like, oh, yeah. that wasn't too, that wasn't too pretty. How about you, Robert? Have you broken uh, any bones? Yeah, I, I did. I mean, I don't know how much it has to do with uh, osteoporosis, but I, I did uh, break a hip. It's probably the third year after my injury, and uh, I was up on uh, the crutches and braces uh, pretty regularly. So I was getting some stamina and getting some technique and everything down. So I was in my chair going into uh, my backyard. And we had steps going into the yard, so we put a makeshift ramp, but it, it had it was steep, right? I mean, I could go up and down it, but this one time I went to pop the wheelie to wheel down it, and it kind of caught the edge of it, and it just shoved the front of the wheelchair down, and I flew like Superman onto the cement slab and landed on my hip, nailed it. So um, I kind of knew so I couldn't feel it uh, uh, at the time because the feeling was kind of still sporadic. But I knew something was wrong because, like, you know, just that weird feeling you have in your body. So uh, I, I knew something was wrong. So I got uh, went to the hospital, and uh, sure enough, I broke the femur. So I have the I have the the pin and all that, and and the screws in my hip, and I never had it removed. So um, and it was back in the day when they were still putting stainless steel. So I still have some stainless steel in me. But there was no sense in removing it. It wasn't going to get in my way. It wasn't going to cause any. Pain. If it did, they would remove it. But I mean, I've had it now for what 45 years now, and it hasn't caused me any problem other than going through uh, uh, metal detectors because it still kind of alerts everything. But yeah, it's uh, it, it's yeah, that was my experience. And again, I I don't you know I hit pretty good with the hip, but I don't know how much osteoporosis might have played a part. But before we get even even deeper, Bobby, why don't you uh, can you explain what what it actually is osteoporosis? Yeah, let's, let's dive into a little bit of osteoporosis and what, what kind of damage and what's caused. You know, osteoporosis actually is a disease. Uh, <clears throat> and so you don't think of it as like a disease. You kind of just think of it as more in, you know, bone loss, which uh, osteoporosis is a disease in which bone loss density becomes weak and brittle. So obviously, you know, right away our bones are just, you know, becoming brittle. And I think um, I think we know why, I mean, in the sense that you're just not active anymore. Um, but here it says in osteoporosis, the normal process of creating new cells and reabsorbing old ones in the bones become in balance, leading <clears throat> to a gradual thinning of bone tissue. So basically, it, it all comes down to cells. So I think that imbalance and I think I think it's just the blood flow and um, and the inactivity of, you know, of um, circulation. And then all of a sudden everything just sets in. And I think, um, you know, you kind of came across this, you know, why does that happen more often with somebody with SEI than than other people? Well, it's uh, obviously because there's a lot of uh, non-walking, so which is uh, takes away the the weight-bearing activity. Uh, you know, there's a lot more bed rest, so um, that that contributes uh, to the bone loss. It's just like uh, you know the uh, astronauts when they're in uh, outer space, there uh, they uh, the loss of gravity. You know, so they uh, spend a lot of time, in, and that's why they got to be careful when they get back. They do all the tests and stuff to make sure. The impact of the the no gravity, uh, the medications we take uh, that can cause a lot to do with uh, bone loss and uh, different things like that, as as well as the spinal cord, uh, the disruption of the connection between the brain and muscle that may be uh, a cause. 
that can cause osteoporosis. Like we said earlier, there's a lot of um, uh, studies being done and tests and things like that. And there's some, some that are pretty much make sense. And there's some that they kind of uh, go back and forth and really haven't found the, the answers that we're looking for. But um, it, it is uh, SCI. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of other things that may, may cause, but primarily uh, the, uh, the no, not putting any weight on your, on, your, on your bones and things like that. And a lot of, spend a lot of time in bed, are, I think, are the two big factors there. But uh, anyway, yeah. so, well, you know, how common is it? What do you think, Bobby? I think it's common with all of us. I mean, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm someone that hasn't been in a standing frame in probably 30 years. I, you know, I mean, I did it for the first three years and then kind of life took over for me. I went back to school and then got a job. And um, as I was mentioning yesterday in our show that, you know, I, I lived on my own. I did have a roommate, but she wasn't there for me. She was my roommate. Um, and we became friends, but she didn't, you know, she helped me from time to time on uh, certain things. But one thing that I wasn't going to have her do is like, go get a standing frame and hey, help me into it. Because for us quads, it's a lot harder to get into a standing frame. And, you know, for someone like you, it's, you know, it's a lot easier. But I, I've never, I haven't stayed in 30, 30 years. Um, and but you stand all the time, right? Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, I'm not spending a lot of time like I used to, but, uh, you know, I stand up to make my transfer into my truck and things like that. So uh, I, I think I'm, you know, I, I know it's, I haven't seen anything about how long or how many uh, uh, minutes or hours or whatever you need to stand. But I know, I think uh, what I've heard in the, in the long run is that if you do three times a week for a half hour, I guess that's enough. Like for me, I, all my transfers, if I do five transfers, it's, well, it's a few minutes. It's, I maybe spend 15, 20 minutes standing. Um, and, and, and that might have helped preserve a little bit of my, of my uh, bones. But uh, in terms of uh, my upper body, that's a whole different story in terms of the damage that I have with my... Uh... Go ahead. But here's one thing in common for bone loss that happens with all of us. So bone loss starts immediately following onset of SCI. So as soon as we're having, as soon as we had our injury, uh, not having, but as soon as we had our, our yeah. uh, injury, it starts it's right immediate. away. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it happens. So in a sense that, you know, um, yours happened three years after you said, so yeah, most the, likely, the hill, yeah. some, you know, some sort of, of osteoporosis, you know, and the thing is, it continues for at least 12 to six months, uh, 16 months, and then it kind of plateaus, but it still gradually happens over time is what they say um, from the studies at um, University of Washington, D.C. and other studies that you and I were finding that. Um, but the most critical part is in our first 16 months. That is just crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and it's fast. And I, again, uh, the bone loss piece is, is uh, you're saying, is pretty quick. And atrophy, uh, the muscle atrophy for me was was pretty quick. Um, so th there's a lot of things to kind of look for, uh, look look at for what you need to do to to help preserve as well. But I know for um, for uh, the uh, prevention, you know, you have to just work on your positioning, uh, the uh, using the Maybe, maybe a diet, a, a good nutritious diet to keep protein and things like that in your body. And, yeah, uh, one of those one of those common common risk factors of our bone loss is uh, is intake of our caffeine, yep. uh, tobacco use, uh, alcohol use, yep, yep. nutrition factors that you said. So, and then also the the our vitamin D, you know, getting out in the sun. So what do you think about our first 16 months? You and I were probably not outside yeah. as much as we used to be. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I tried. Yeah, yeah, I, I so tried. But I, yeah, I, I tried because, but, you know, you here's the thing is, you know, you, you can, I contributed to it. I, me falling and breaking my bone, okay, that put me in bed rest, you know? So there, there's more you know, no, no weight bearing on, on my body at that time. Cause I was in bed rest for like uh, six months. The doctor didn't want me to do any using like any braces or crutches or anything like he didn't want me in a car just because of the chances of me getting an accident with all this surgery being done and all that. So, um, 
that that was kind of issue. Uh, the thing that I can relate to the most is basically the exercise programs that we kind of need to do. And and uh, for me, it was the problem with the overuse syndrome, which is the shoulders and arms and things like that, bones there, the the muscles, and that all kind of ties together with uh, the, my, the damage that I'm experiencing now. I have experienced it throughout my life, but now it's really prevalent in, in what I'm doing now and as I age. So uh, there's, there's a lot of things to take care of. And, you know, there's a lot of things that you, if you need more information, you can look on the, uh, on the uh, Internet because there's so much information on it. And, you know, we're kind of scratching the surface here and giving you a little bit of idea what's going on out there. And, and with all the things yeah. that, that uh, we know and that we're learning right now uh, in terms of preventing and all that, there are treatments. And, uh, Bobby, what, what treatments have you found in, in our research that we're doing this? Um, treatments. So, you know, first it's calcium intake, uh, calcium intake, you might need or should not might need, but you should talk to your doctor. And because calcium can, you know, you'd have to take a lot of calcium up. And what I think I read a thousand to fifteen hundred milligrams um, a day or three times a day. Uh, there was various factors. So the first thing I would do about if you're going to introduce calcium is talk to your doctor because calcium usually goes with throughout the body when the body is active. And what I've heard is that when we're not active, calcium will only go to product, uh, parts of our body that we are just moving. So, you know, obviously we move our hip to get our pants on and off. Right. And not much more of the legs and the feet as much but a lot of hips because we're moving forward and back. And so I think all the calcium goes straight to some of those joints and can cause like what um, uh, you kind of, you and I were talking about earlier, it was HO, which yeah. is, um, oh, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, heterotopic uh, ossification. Yeah. And yeah. something that I had right after my accident Luckily, it wasn't bad enough. They didn't have to blast it out, but some people have to blast it out. Another um, treatment is just pure vitamin D. So obviously, it is a known factor that people, everybody is um, deficient on their vitamin D lately. And yeah. that's because of suntan block. And when we're putting on 50, 75, some people are putting on 100, you're not getting that intake of your vitamin D. And yes, you can take it in a supplement, but obviously the best way is sun. So, but it's a it's a fine line. How much sun can you go out? And so, and I know a lot of quads, uh, they, they definitely are, you know, sun god worshipers and they'll be out there forever getting a suntan because they can't get warm enough unless they're out in the sun. So that's that's uh, a couple things that you can do. We talked about standing frames. Yeah, standing frames are are you know pretty important. But once again, they're not even sure how much standing you have to do to actually make up for that loss of you know, of increasing some of the bone density or making sure you're not going to lose it. You know, they still say you know you're standing like like you were talking about three to four times a week. It's yeah. still not enough. Yeah. You have to be on your feet constantly. And then there's FES bikes. So FES is a form of electric um, stimulation where you're putting pads all over your legs and then it's given um, uh, an electric shock to the muscles and stimulating the muscles for movement. And then as you're pushing the cycling, the pedal or whatever you're having your FES to do, usually it's for a, for your uh, uh, like a foot cycle, a stationary bike, and uh, that sometimes helps. So you can do the F, um, FES, and then there was something I read. Where was it? Um, what, what about the rehab piece with with uh, range of motion and somebody like you know coming in and moving your your legs or your arms or whatever needs to be in, in, in the manual piece of it with, with without the electrical stimulation. I think it's important, but I don't think it's gonna it's gonna help strengthen those bones. I think yeah. number one, I think 
once the damage, and this is something, you know, my doctor talked about, once that sets in, it's there. It's not going to go away. You can't, yeah. you can't reverse the ref uh, effects. Yeah. You know, you can continue to, to slow it down, but you're not going to stop those effects. And that's what's scary about, you know, about having osteoporosis is that it's always going to keep going more and more yeah. throughout the years as we yeah. age with our, with our spinal cord injury. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you, you know, want to think about, um, as we talked about earlier, keeping that healthy diet, yeah. you know, no smoking, limit your alcohol and caffeine intake, which oof, that yeah. caffeine, intake, I don't know. I, yeah. mean, I really try. It's my third cup, I'll uh, do half hot water and half coffee just so I can get that coffee taste. And then, you know, obviously we want to avoid falls. I mean, yeah. avoid some of that activities. And, you know, I know that's hard. And what we, you know, what we think about is trying to avoid life, but that's, that's almost impossible, I, I think. I, and I know just things happen, you know, you, you think you're the safest and all of a sudden you're exiting your ramp and out of your van and something happens and you just, you yeah. bite that. Well, yeah. You know, and the thing is like, like for me, uh, bed rest, I mean, I don't, I don't mind taking it easy and things like that, but bed rest, you know, when you something that you have to do for me, because it's, again, it's going to be contributing to the osteoporosis. So maybe there should be, you know, if, if it can be done, you know, modified, some type of modified exercise where you're just not uh, laying and, and, and really doing nothing, you know? So uh, I think you got to kind of be really, uh, really question a lot with your doctors and therapists when, if you are experiencing anything like that. Or if you do have some type of injury, a break or something like that, because, you know, laying in bed is just going to contribute to it, at least in my opinion. I don't know how the medical looks at it and all that stuff. And it, it just kind of seems like it makes sense that if you're in bed rest, you're, you know, you're kind of just uh, contributing to it. So I don't know. The nutrition thing I think for me is is really that makes the most sense. Just really good diet, which which I don't have. I don't practice. And I, you know, I enjoy my cocktails. So that's a strike against me right there. But um I, I think uh, for me, in a sense, that uh, I'm pretty active. So, I mean, uh, I get some exercise, not as much as I used to. It seems like since the pandemic came about, I, I kind of got into a slower pace uh, uh, with, with my life and what I'm doing now. Uh, and I'm enjoying doing nothing and you know not having to do something, but I need to focus more and a little more exercise. And I, <clears throat> as always, my diet, it's whether for weight or for whatever, it's just not a healthy diet and protein and, and the carbs do so you have that and things like that all kind of work hand in hand. So, uh, yeah, there's all a lot of things that we got to got to work for and stuff like that. So uh, it, it's 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 hard to believe because, you know, I used to figure osteoporosis, you know, I used to know uh, friends of my, my my mom and dad or my mom, you know, women that had, had women, elderly women that had a, a lot of problems with, it, you know, just a small little trip and fall they break their ankle or hip or leg or whatever so it was kind of interesting uh uh just doing a little more research and i mean i wasn't in the dark about it i know that it osteoporosis is, is is prevalent in the sci world but you know prior to that i just thought it was you know people that were just older whether it had sci or not it's just that's just pretty common i think i think that's the case too there there are just able-bodied people that get osteoporosis, no matter what age, it just depends on their hereditary and what's going on with their systems and things like that. So it's a, uh, well, and, right. and I think for them, it's more of, of that lack of, you know, exercise and movement. And I think it's so, so important, but which is funny that where we, I think we read somewhere where it just says, you know, um, I was trying to, find it but it just how how quick and uh it happens but it was where was that it was what are you looking for because i got so many notes but i don't i got i kind of yeah, like, yeah. there's so much information yeah, but, overload on this you know right but i think it was more just talking about how there's an imbalance and i think i read that the imbalance of of our cells going to our bones because of yeah. the spinal cord it's that connection so once the cells aren't healthy 
are not giving it healthy feeding to those bones that just happens right away. And one thing that we know with aging, you know, as you mentioned, you know, yeah, your grandma, you know, your mom, you know, somebody older, and we're thinking what, 75 and plus, uh, 80 and plus, that's yep. when, you know, it, it's yep. kind of like anybody, you know, over 80, you hear these words, as soon as I heard the words for, you know, the, the phone call I got for, um, from my grandma, She's like, I'm in the hospital. I broke my hip. And I'm just like, it's a it's a death sentence. Yeah. You know, at first I thought that it, and then it yeah, sort of did right. become her demise after six months. You know, it wasn't the factor, but the none of the good factors came in after, you know, of trying to recover because then in the hospital she got C diff and then one thing after another, you know, and it just it was a slippery slope. So I mean, but now we're thinking about it and you know, I yeah, I'm 51, but consider myself pretty young still and uh, pretty young in the sense that I don't want to think about it if I just barely fall out of my chair, which I did two years ago. And when I broke my hip, it was like a simple little fall onto um, uh, dirt and it wasn't even packed. It was loose dirt and just like kind of went, whoa. And I didn't even fall on the side that broke. I fell on the other side. So it was just like, what the heck, you know, that that easy? I broke it that easy from this little simple fall, you know, and that's another thing, you know, when we think of risk, I was having somebody else help me and not somebody that knows, you know, somebody like myself, a quad, how their balance is. So he kind of spun me around when he, uh, we were going down this hill backwards and then he spun me around and then I went out of my chair. And I should have waited for somebody that knows me. So that's yeah. my mistake, you know. And I know we're talking a lot about about this, Robert. But all right, you know, one thing we were trying to dig into is how do we know we, you know, how bad is it? You know, is there s screenings there or scans that we can get to find yeah. out? Do we have a baseline? Yeah, so here's here's the deal. What I here's what I've kind of found out about uh, the screening process. There's a test that uh, is available out there called DXA, which is uh, dual entry X-ray absorption metry. And uh, what they do is they do that screening. Wait, 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 wait. wait that. <laughs> no, don't ask me. Again. Don't ask me to say it again. I got very spit that one out. Uh, but the the goal of that uh, screening test is to kind of separate first the the silent diseases that are that may be there causing osteoporosis and not just the SCI. So the test basically is is for that. So um, they really, it's kind of controversial because a lot of people don't want, don't think you need to take the, the DXA because um, uh, it's just, they want you to assume hey, if you're SCI, just figure you have uh, osteoporosis or some form, maybe not major or um, whatever, but you have it because the, the, the basis of the test is like I'm saying is just to kind of weed out other causes of osteoporosis. So they have that and, and uh, people with the, the SCI bone loss and the exposure to the radiation, all that, you know, it kind of is, is all different effects on, on people. So the, the screening process is basically configure that uh, after SCI, the, the SCI osteoporosis is high. So you just got to figure that. Uh, the the uh, other reason is that we already know that people with SCI uh, are going to have it and figure you have it. I don't know if that's, you know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how bad it is though. I mean, if I have it, I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, knock on wood, I've fallen a couple times within the, or a time in the last year and I was okay. But again, uh, I don't know. There's there's so much um, research done, but there's not there's like conflicting or they're not not uh, fully uh, the resolve in it is isn't really yeah. complete. Yeah. So uh, so they're kind of going back. Exactly. One, one one study will have this, another study will have this, and they kind of not really sure where it lies and where they intersect or if they do intersect and things like that. Kind of as we found out, like if you are taking uh, calcium uh, injections. It doesn't say that it's actually going to help. In fact, my uh, my physiatrist, she's like, you would have to take so much, and it's going to actually probably do you more harm than good for. Yeah. And it probably won't. It won't. And it might do a little bit of good for your osteoporosis, but it might do more harm to your system itself, your kidneys, and 
um, your liver. So, you know, she was like, let's, let's not go there. So, you know, yeah. she kind of held back. Now there's something we haven't talked about because you and I are what guys, right? So yeah. let's talk to the women out there, you know? So now you got a spinal cord injury, you're a, a female, and then you get into post uh, menopause. And yeah. it's already a known fact that after post menopause, their bones become uh, weak. And mm -hmm. uh, that's where Good they point. have to really watch what they do and um, making sure they're, you know, they're staying healthy with their diet and no smoking and all those things because now you got dual things you got being post menopause and a spinal cord injury so women you know just fyi just it's something to think about that you know it might get um a little a little bit weaker than the average uh, uh the average female and then the average spinal cord male as well yep that's that's a good point you know maybe uh the women's uh disability group can maybe look even look into that farther maybe they can do an extension of what we're doing here I, I don't know we can maybe uh you know see if that and hope that that happens but uh before we go any further should we give a shout out to uh our sponsors mobility professionals Absolutely. and uro urology professionals uh I have a good good um experience with mobility professionals which is uh for wheelchairs and um all the other dme needs uh, the great, great company to work with Dean, Don, the owner, you know, he always shows up to some of our events and, uh, just, a, just a good group of people to work with, uh, the techs and, the, uh, the, uh, assistants in the office and, uh, specialists in the office and all that just great, great company mobility professionals here for Southern California. You know, if you have uh, urological needs, urology professionals is nationwide. They'll help with all your catheter and, uh, urological needs. So they're nationwide. Uh, so give them a check out and if, if you see if they take your insurance, great people to work with. Uh, you won't be sorry. Yeah. So, so what um, else we got to say, yeah. Bobby? What else we got to do here? You know, lastly, I wanted to talk about, you know, we, you know, you brush on that. You broke your hip and you have a, a plate in your hip and I broke my hip and I have a plate and a rod in mine. So, you know, thinking about can bone fractures cause other health problems? And I think we can wrap it up with that. And the the answer is, yeah, there's complications that can happen. And the one thing that, you know, I was first told when I broke my hip, you know, I said, well, do I, do we need to really do surgery? And they said, yeah, because there's a displacement of your hip. And if we don't plate, plate it, then all of a sudden your hips are going to start to rotate and, you're going to probably damage your spine you, the way you sit so it can cause a pressure sore um so absolutely i had to go through you know and get it uh screws and it wasn't plated but i know they they attached a, a few screws in there and the one thing you know that we all think about is you know for us who are c or t uh, T6 and above is, you know, AD, autotomic dysreflexia. So there can be, you know, dysreflexia. There can be pain that goes along with it. So, yeah. um, you know, I don't know if you had pain or anything like that. And then also a lot of spasms. So even though you're just sitting there still or laying in bed still, you know, the body wants to react and wants to tell you like, hey, something's not going right. And you're just you know, you're just having a lot of, a lot of spasms. And then another thing that I didn't know of, of um, calcium buildup. So in that area, you can have an increased calcium buildup and then it could soften the tissue and, um, and could affect the, around the fractured site. So you gotta now, be now really, is, really careful. Is, it, is the calcium buildup, is that like a bone spur? Is, is that have anything to do with anything like that? Um, no, it just says an abnormal buildup in calcium. Okay. So it's probably the body, you know, body throwing everything it can at it. And, you know, and because it's not throwing it all around our body, so it goes to one particular area uh, and has too much of a buildup. And then that's okay. where it can um, soften the tissue around that fracture site. So, you know, sometimes we want to, you know, 
one to uh, be cautious of. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I think for me, on, on, I have some issue with the bone and all that just over the years, the overuse, and I, 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 you never really got too deep in it. I mean, I've gone to therapy doctors and MRIs and, you know, x-rays and all that. I get, I get bone surveys uh, a couple of years ago. The last couple of years I were getting them bone surveys for something else, but it kind of kept an eye on my, my uh, bone density. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think uh, for me, it's the, I think I might be experiencing part of that uh, in terms of the, the bone loss is my shoulders and arms and, you know, the, they're not not breaking, but they're they're getting weaker in terms of because the uh, the muscle mass is is uh, atrophying as well as well. I mean, I'm getting some strength, but you know it's funny because it just kind of happens gradually, and it's been hard for me to kind of figure you know, how much of it is uh, aging and things like that. So I'm getting weaker, and but again, that's all part of the atrophy and 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 bone and everything like that, the aging process. So a lot of things that uh, not just uh, us that are older SCIs, but for the younger SCIs that are out there that can kind of just look uh, a little bit and listen to what we're saying and look to the future. And again, diet, exercise, uh, just, you know, do the uh, your necessary medical tests and things like that when your doctor asks for it and, and talk to your doctor if you do have any concerns or, uh, you know, that's, that's what they're there for in, a, in the long run. I just wish I would uh, listen to these words years ago. Uh, because I, I, did, I didn't take care of myself. And uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I wasn't brutal on it, but I just didn't listen to my body like I should have because I was uh, involved with my life, moving on, moving on, moving on, overcoming, overcoming, dealing with adversity and stuff. And I didn't really focus on the, the primary is my body telling me what, what it needs. You know, so, you know, one thing I think is... What's that? I just, I hope, hopefully everyone can learn from what we're sharing and what we we found in our research, you know, and just living, you know. Well, and also one last thing I want to want to brush on, you know, anytime you think you have a fracture, go get it checked out. You know, one oh, thing yeah. that can like I talked about is, you know, when you fracture something, it can display some of your seating um, and the way we sit. You know, That's I have a friend, it wasn't his fault and it wasn't the he had other complications from a brain injury. Our good friend, um, Ernie, you know, when he got out of the hospital and some rehab, they never really treated his broken femur. And so his leg is, it won't, it won't tuck back anymore. So, you know, make sure you get, you know, those broken bones treated. Unlike Ernie, he wasn't able to at the time. He was dealing with a lot more health issues, but, you know, it's one thing to get it treated. I've known a couple guys that are like, yeah, I broke my femur because look how swollen it is and feel that. But, hey, I sit all day, so who cares? You know, and that can throw off your leg and and uh, and affect the way you sit. So be careful about when you break a leg, you know. And then lastly, something I don't want to think about, I'm sure Sean, our uh, our guy in the background doing our, our camera work today, and I'm sure, you know, when we think about seatbelts, I probably would have never broke my hip if I had a seatbelt, you know, but I, you know, it's probably coming to that age where <laughs> you and I are going to probably have to get a seatbelt yeah. here pretty soon. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't know if they make cool seatbelts out there, but you know, it's something that we might have to think about using. I don't know. It's, but I, you know, it's, it's just one of those things, you know, might have to, you know, use straps to take my, my legs down in case I do fall. Yeah that they're not going out to the side. And, and so limit some of these risk factors, especially when we think about falling. Yeah. And, and, you know, now for me, you know, with the aging process, I ask for a help a lot more than I ever did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. and if I don't, trust me, you know, a couple of my friends and especially the wife, they're like, right here, ask for help. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, the more, yeah. the more things that have happened over the years and the 33 years, I'm just like, you know what? It's time to ask for more help, and it's okay. Yeah, oh, I, I see that. I see that for me, and for me, uh, the thing too is the changes, making changes, uh, changes that are be to my benefit. Yeah, I'd like to do this and that, but you know, I'm going to have to change, kind of bite the bullet of what I've been putting off, because in the long run, if if I don't change and I uh, injure myself again or you know uh, fall or whatever, it's easy to make changes now. I just uh, I'm, I'm 
I'm going to be doing it anyway. And I've already started doing some things. Uh, so change is necessary and beneficial, especially with us aging and, and, and any SCI. You know, you've made changes already, so it shouldn't be hard. Just keep moving forward with it and uh, not be afraid of change. Yeah. Yeah. Good That's deal, man. Good. So, yeah, I've learned a lot. Robert, I've learned Robert. a lot about osteoporosis. And uh, there's I know there's a lot more. We kind of scratch the surface because I was surprised on how much information is out there when when we decided we were going to do this topic, you know. And I, and I think when we do this topic in a, in a few months, uh, we can bring on a guest. I have a, a good friend of mine. Her name is uh, Julianne, and we've had her a guest on yeah. our other um, The Guys Live to Roll. And uh, she goes through a lot of osteoporosis kind of dealings with her injury or her, um, she has um, transverse mellitus. And yes. I know she takes calcium and all that. So uh, she does the whole nine yards of all of her treatment for osteoporosis. So we can ask her to come on and have another guest. And uh, we just scratched the surface. And I think there's a lot more that goes into it. I'd love to see the chat tomorrow. And um, I'll try to try to join you. I know my treatment's done around three o'clock. So hopefully if I'm not on the road, I can uh, join the chat with you and Sean. Cool. So, Sounds good. Yeah. Good. So good luck, good you, luck tomorrow with your treatment. What's that? Good luck with your treatment tomorrow. Yeah, I'm excited and um, good uh, stuff. You know, can't wait. Got the phone call going in, and uh, man, it, it definitely makes me feel better. So, yeah. uh, so thanks so everyone. What, so, what, yeah. So what's the next date? We're going to be. Uh, well, we'll be back live in December. Uh, yeah, you know. So now because our other date would have been on Thanksgiving, so I don't think we're going to do a tape show like this i think we'll give it a break and then we'll be back on the 8th of december okay so we're going to be on the 8th of december but the weekend before the 8th of december we have a friends giving fundraiser that we're doing here at my house here in huntington beach fountain valley whatever you want to say love to have um, all of you join but i know that many of you live far but you can still go on the website and uh, purchase uh, a ticket and support us. Uh, that would be awesome. And maybe, maybe we do. We can think of something like give you a, give you a, a discount code or something like that. But uh, love to, if you can't make it, uh, please think about uh, supporting us that way. If you're here in the Southern California area, or if you want to fly to the Southern California, yep. it's yeah. going to be here. We're going to limit it to 25 people. It's like a get together with. It's not going to be leftover turkeys, but we'll do a little bit more turkey because actually my wife and I are doing a pot roast because we're going to be doing the, the turkey on the on the third. So be doing uh, that with some games and hanging out, having a couple of cocktails and good time with friends. Sounds good. Sounds good. Awesome. And don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to join us next week on our regular time live to roll at 3 30 with uh sean tom and i and when we're not on it's the ladies they had a a great show last week i got to watch half of it on beauty and fashion so check out brianna and the women's show they're the first and third we're going to be the second and fourth thursday so thanks for joining us on rolling over the hill all right see everybody thank you all right Later, old man over there, and good night, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, man.